Hello Star Wars Collectors, I'm Mando Menace and today we have a comparison video featuring the new Galaxy's Edge Vintage Collection Millennium Falcon. We're going to be comparing it with the Legacy Collection one from 2010, which I believe is the exact same one that was released under the Vintage Collection as a Toys R Us exclusive later on. So you may have been recommended to watch this video by my very good friend Tim over at Boss Bounty. If you somehow have stumbled across this video without seeing his video review, then please check him out. He is the channel, the channel, for action figures, particularly Vintage Collection and the original Vintage line as well. Right, so let's get started. Okay, so we have the new Galaxy's Edge version on the right, and we have the original Legacy Collection version on the left. Um, so my initial impressions before I compared the two of them were that, yes, this one, the new one, has a bit more detail, better paint job, but actually having them together, it's actually really clear how different they are. It's like they're two different vehicles. And I have to say, the job they've done with the paintwork and the weathering on the new one is absolutely fantastic. It literally looks like a prop out of the movie. This was already a really fantastic vehicle, but the paint job they've given it, I think, deems it to be a worthy upgrade. Potentially not the £350 um, that it costs, but I'm extremely happy with it. Um, I'm really glad I made this purchase. Okay, so let's have a look at the paint jobs of both of these ships. So, obviously, the one on the right, the Galaxy's Edge Millennium Falcon, has a much superior paint job now. It's got a lot more detail to it. It's managed to get the weathering in every nook and cranny of the actual ship, which gives it a really, gives it that Lucas lived-in galaxy kind of feel to it. Um, it looks like it's been through a lot of battles, carbon scoring, as they say in the movies. The Legacy Collection of its time wasn't too bad at all. Um, all of the vintage vehicles at the moment all seem to have a lot of this grungy weathering that's really, really nice. Um, you have a bit of that on the engine parts at the back, but apart from that, it's just quite a nice paint job on the Legacy Collection. It's got a lot more grey and red parts to it than the newer version. Um, but yeah, there's just the weathering at the back. So here we have the two Falcons with their um, parts taken off. And this gives you quite a good aerial view of the actual inside workings of the ship. So the most obvious difference that you can see straight away is that they've decided to paint the upholstery on the seats and some of the corridors to make it more true to the movie. Especially for in the sequel trilogy, you particularly notice this, I think. Um, but yeah, there's a much nicer paint job inside. One difference I noticed with the training ball that's actually, I think, better in the Legacy Collection is it doesn't hang down as long on the string and you can even see it from this high up that the the training ball is actually, the training remote is actually white instead of grey. I just wanted to give you a better view of the actual inside of the ship. So as you can see, there's a nicer yellow used in the newer version as opposed to the white. One of the main reasons why I bought the new Galaxy's Edge Falcon was because when I purchased the Legacy Collection one back in about 2011, it, was, it wasn't it was brand new. It had a few parts missing, so as you can see, I'm missing the missiles on the top and the bottom, including these ones here as well. Um, and also the infamous, very easy to lose, Dejaric chess pieces as well. Um, another thing I wouldn't have done if I'd had the Falcon from new is apply the stickers. Because as you can see, they are starting to peel slightly. Um, that's definitely fixable. That's something I can do. I can I can get them to stick down with some adhesive of some kind. But apart from that, yeah, so the Falcon is complete apart from those bits there. Um, so I'm just going to go through what the original Falcon looked like. So main differences to the new one is you have the white um, furnishings instead of the yellow. And here on the, the new version, you can see there's a massive difference there. As I mentioned previously as well, the training ball is unpainted. So it's grey as opposed to the white of the original Legacy version. So that's something that the Legacy version, in my opinion, does better. It's a really minor thing. And actually, on the newer version, I will be able to adjust the string length. It doesn't won't be too much of an issue at all. Um, but everything else largely is the same. It's it's the same uh, skeleton, um, the same vehicle as it were, um, but it's got a much better paint job. 
um, and it seems a bit sturdier as well. So that's they are the they are the main differences. But apart from that, it's essentially the same ship. So if you already have the Legacy Collection one complete and you're happy with it, um, the only reason you would want to upgrade it is for the paint job, which I have to say is absolutely fantastic. I mean, we've got all these carbon scoring marks, all all of the smoke. Um, and for me, it was about having it, having it, you know, brand new, out the box, um, complete as well. Um, you know, fortunately, I have more income than I did previously when I bought the Legacy Falcon. Um, so, yeah, I'm in a better place to be able to have one. And I'm very happy with it, I have to say. I do think the paint job is like night and day, really. One thing that goes missing before all the others with the pieces that came with the Legacy Falcon. Mine didn't come with it, unfortunately, when I purchased it. But I do have them with the new one. So they are the Dejaric chess pieces, which are absolutely tiny. And for safety purposes, I've stored them inside one of the hatches here. So I'll just get them out. I think it's quite a good way of keeping them safe. I advise everyone else to do the same. So here they are. So they are absolutely tiny detailed and they, they light up really nicely um, when the lights and sounds come on but yes um, I'm keeping these bagged these go for quite a lot of money on eBay I mean I've seen them go for 30 pounds just these these little pieces here because they're so easily lost and hard to get hold of but yeah I'm gonna keep them in the smuggling hatches which I think is quite apt for the Millennium Falcon so there is a hatch just here which you can see a um, lot tighter than the original one and I believe that's because it's brand new this side and then we've also got one just here as well so as you can see they are <laughs> in really tightly these are really <laughs> really in quite tightly I had a little trouble getting that off but yeah that just clips in like so and fits in really snugly like that we've also got two doors here so this is more storage. Um, goes in there. It's like there's almost a little bed or something there. Uh, this part here, I'll just close the doors. This part here is where Luke was when he had his hand cut off by Darth Vader, where Princess Leia was looking after him. And I believe this little hole here actually fits um, from a Luke Bespin set that came with the missing hand. Um, I remember seeing it on the original box for the Legacy Falcon. So that's a cool little feature as well. So I thought I'd show you the stickers and the instructions that come with the actual Falcon. So these stickers here, these are actually different to the Legacy Collection version. And the main way you can tell this is in actual fact, Hondo is actually in the screens on some of them. So you've got him there and you've also got him down here as well. Um, there are some cool little Easter eggs in the stickers. So we've got the train remote and Luke's blast shield helmet as well. That's really cool. Um, but I'm not actually interested in putting the stickers onto my Falcon. Um, I never apply them very well and they peel off eventually. I quite like having them in the pristine condition. They are like this. Um, so yeah, uh, it would have been cool if they could have done the, the detail as decor for the inside. But again, that would have made the price super expensive and a very, very intricate thing to be able to do, um, which just isn't possible these days. And then also we've got a really nice image, which is actually the original Legacy Collection um, image of the Falcon on the instructions. And in here, if you did want to apply the stickers, you've got them all co number coded to tell you where to go and where to stick them. Now, the main difference in terms of the sound is that where there was once an off switch, which is, was this side here, that is now the Galaxy's Edge sounds, or the Smuggler's Run sounds. So we've got the original Star Wars sounds, all from A New Hope, to the left, and the Smuggler's Run sounds to the right. Um, every single sound from the Legacy Collection has been transferred over. So you've got Han and Chewie in the cockpit, you've got Han talking to Luke as they escape the Death Star, about shooting all those TIE Fighters, you've got the, the Jarek game between C3PO, R2 and Chewie and you've also got Obi-Wan training Luke as well so you've got all the original sounds and then you've also got the new sounds of Hondo and Arca, Chewbacca, 
And R4, the droid speaking as well. Be a smuggler's run, Galaxy's Edge Falcon, about the new radar dish from the sequel trilogy. So it's really easy to just put this um, on. You just literally take it out, like so. It clicks in really nicely. And this is operated by this little lever that's just on the side. And this is also the same lever. This, As this moves around, so does the training ball that's hanging from the piece of string on the inside as well. You've also got the top cannon, which fires some missiles. So the missiles are here. These are triggered by the buttons on the side. And how this actually works is these buttons hit the side pieces that have been cleverly put on. And again, this is the same for Legacy Falcon. And they fire out like this. And you have a cool, you have a cool sound effect as well. I wanted to show you what the sounds for the original trilogy sounded like against the backdrop of some really cool characters. Let the Wookiee win. That's not wise of Sir Wookiee. I suggest a new strategy, R2. Let the Wookiee win. With the blast shield down, I can't even see. How am I supposed to fight? You see? You can do it. You've taken your first step into a larger world. Okay, so here's the sounds for the Galaxy's Edge version. Things are getting too hot. We've got to get out of here. <laughs> What do you mean, system failure? Mm -hmm. Faulty hyperdrive. Well, that's not good. Mm -hmm. Those sky fighters must have followed us back to Batu. R5, access the emergency power supply. <coughs> They've locked on to us. Take evasive action. Make the jump to light speed. Mm -hmm. Things are getting too hot. We've got to get out of here. Okay, so that's all for this button that's just on the top here. And then we also have the two buttons on the side. So the first button. <laughs> all right, my friends, we are cleared for takeoff. R5, pre-flight diagnostics report. Hey, 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 we are on a timetable here. Chewbacca, what is the holdup? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, 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 my friends. I'm afraid we have picked up a hitchhiker. R5, scan the exterior of the Falcon for life forms. Okay, so that one from the second button, and then all the rest of these are from the second button as well. The last thing I want is to let another Rata loose in here. So that's the only thing that he says with the second button about the Raptor being missing. Um, and then we have the engine sounds. The engine sound buttons are just located here. Um, so we'll go ahead and play some of them now for you. Fire the harpoons! Now let's go get that coaxial. So it looks like a lot of the um, sounds actually from that Hondo says are also on these buttons here, which is quite interesting. So some of these have been repeated. That's not the case for the original trilogy, New Hope version.
online. Take that first to the scum. Fire the harpoons. Possibly my favourite electric or light feature of the Falcon, and this was present in the original Legacy version as well, is the actual ramp coming down. Um, as you see, particularly in um, Empire Strikes Back, when they're in the cave of the giant um, slug um, on the asteroid. But yeah, this is really cool, and it's a really, really nice effect. I mean, how cool is that? So yeah, you can even send your figures up the ramp. Um, we'll do it one more time. On the other side of the Falcon, you have um, the escape pod hatch. So this looks just like the other one with the door, but actually if you open it up, so there's a sound effect for opening it up and there's actually an escape pod inside, which is really cool. You can put your figures in. I suppose it's a bit like the one that Ray was in in The Last Jedi, um, loosely, not exactly the same, but that's another cool little extra. And then you pop it back in here like that. should also make a sound when you put it in properly. There we go. Drawing all the sounds that Hondo makes, which I think are actually really cool. I love I love Hondo as a character anyway. Um, you may have mentioned him speaking to a droid called R5. And R5 is um, a bounty hunter droid, a bounty hunter astromech, which has like shark's teeth painted on the bottom of his dome. Um, but he's actually going to be available as a 3.75 inch figure with the final re-release 5 POA figures that are coming out you may have seen on the Hasbro live stream. So he comes in a set with the Bounty Hunters, which is Boba Fett, Django, Bosk, IG-88. So also with the new Falcon come two new figures. So we have Hondo Unaka, who is going to be released on a single card in the next wave of the Vintage Collection, with Chira Timway, Luke Jedi Knight, and Fives. And we've got Chewbacca as well. So we'll look at Hondo first of all. So Hondo is a brand new figure. Um, he's really, really nice. He's a really good representation of the character. This is based on his Galaxy's Edge appearance as like an animatronic um, robot. Um, but yeah, he's really, really nice. He's got rocker ankles, which is also quite interesting, which is something that's usually seen in the Black Series. So it's interesting it's made its way over to the vc 3.75 inch line um he comes with a blaster it's unpainted and uh, that's his only accessory but yeah he's a really nice figure i'll just show you the head sculpt just there definitely hondo but yeah really cool to get another vintage collection alien figure i believe um, he's a weak way isn't he hondo um a bit like the ones from jabba's palace but yeah really nice figure captured him really nicely and I think he would work well in, in any Clone Wars line as well, which I think is where I'm going to have him displayed. And then Chewbacca is a new, shall we say, kitbash figure. So he's got the exact same body that they've had since the vintage original trilogy collection, Chewie, from 2004. Um, and they've used this body for the Black Series 3.75 inch one and also the recent um, vintage collection one as well from last year. Um, he has got a new head sculpt, at least. I think it's a. I think it might be from the 5POA version, possibly, but obviously with a really nice paint job. So you can see the eyes there. They've got his, they've got his face. But he's a really nice addition to the collection. He's he's quite different from the the rest of the Chewbacca's we've had. His paint job's different as well, and he's got obviously that sequel trilogy head sculpt. So yeah, overall, two really nice figures that go with the Falcon. Usually packing figures aren't the best because they are kind of like a side thing that um, that is budgeted, so the paint jobs aren't usually as good, but both of these seem fantastic, so yeah, really happy, especially with the Hondo figure. It's good to have a figure earlier than you're expecting as well. Not to be forgotten, of course, we have Porgs. Not just one Porg, not just two Porgs, but six Porgs. So yeah, the Falcon, I'm not too... I'm not too interested in having these out, to be honest. I don't, and, I'm, and I'll probably lose them if I did as well. Um, but yeah, you get the Porgs from The Last Jedi um, to go on your Falcon. 
Um, definitely, I think some people really dig that. So, but yeah, mine are just going to stay in the packaging, but it's nice they added that feature as well. So in a sense, you've got a few extra figures here as well. So to sum up the review, what we have is a fantastic, excellent paint job that really makes this the definitive Millennium Falcon. They've painted up the outside of it to make it look like a movie prop. I mean, you can see here just the, the weathering is unbelievable. And this is the same for all the vintage collection vehicles. So it's been updated in that sense. It also comes with the Galaxy's Edge sounds. Personally, that's not, uh, that wasn't the driving factor for me to buy this. If, if it was the exact same Falcon with those sounds, I, it wouldn't have interested me really. It's the authentic paint job. Um, the fact that you can have the sequel trilogy version and the, the original trilogy version is really cool. Um, and yeah, the fact for me was I had a, this one I bought second hand. It's been a fantastic thing for me, but I wanted a brand new one, um, with all complete with all the pieces. Um, but what you're looking at is it's like a movie prop. It's absolutely excellent. And it's an essential piece of your collection. For me, the Millennium Falcon is the ship from Star Wars. It's the one everyone knows. It's iconic. It's just, yeah. So many awesome things happen in the films, in the in the ship. Um, so yeah, my take is it's a very expensive repaint, but for me it's worth it. Um, I absolutely love it. So thank you very much for watching this review. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, see you next time, and may the force be with you.